Hi everybody, it's me, our Dallas, and in this quick video, I just want to explain, because it came up recently with a client of mine, why you might want to use static factory methods with your domain entities, and in particular, your aggregate routes. So let's get started right away with the code. So we're gonna take a look at a quick console app that I built for this, and I wanna direct you to some of the pieces of the puzzle. So let's start with the order class, all right? The order class is an aggregate root, and it has a simple private parameterless constructor that Entity Framework can use. And this is what I'm talking about when I say static factory method, right? It's a method that you use instead of a constructor to give you back your entity. Now you don't have to use this everywhere, but in the scenario where you want to use domain events to say that an entity was created, it's a good pattern to use. So as you can see here, I am creating an order using that private constructor and then I'm calling order.addDomainEvent to create this order created domain event. Now the aggregate root basically has a little bit of uh, structure in it to handle domain events. You can see an example of this in my clean architecture template or in my ardalis.shared kernel uh, GitHub uh, repo, which you can see linked here in the comments. What we're gonna do is in our example, we're going to go through and set up a mediator implementation the uh, domain event interceptor that we're gonna use to handle firing off those domain events. We'll wire up Entity Framework to use an in-memory database. And then inside, we're gonna create a service provider where we're just going to create an order. And I wanna note that when I create the order here, the domain event has not been fired or handled. And then we're gonna add it to the DB context. We're gonna make note of it here that it still hasn't been handled. Then we're gonna call save changes. And when we actually get into save changes, that's when the interceptor will trigger. So let's take a look at that interceptor. So we have a domain events interceptor, which intercepts save changes, and it works with your DB context. And so inside of this, after we do nothing before save changes, I don't want the domain event to fire until it was saved successfully, but after save changes, uh, in here is where we're going to do the work. So we're gonna call dispatch domain events, and then dispatch domain events is just gonna do this work here to go find all the entities that are aggregate root type, where they have any domain events, and then we're going to go grab those domain events, we're going to publish them, and then we're gonna clear them out so there are no more domain events on those entities when we're done. Now, the nice thing about this is your AppDB context is super clean. There's nothing in here that you have to override or anything like that, uh, and, and that's pretty much it. So then jumping back into the code, what we expect to see is that on this line right here, when we are done saving it, that interceptor will fire, the domain event will get triggered, and this handler will get called, and we'll be able to see that that handler took place. So I'm gonna run the code right now, and what you should see is right here, we instantiated the order, we added it to the DB context, we started calling save changes, and then inside of save changes, the handler gets called after it was persisted, and then save changes was called, that means it's done. Now let's talk about this last bit here. Look, we're gonna call save changes again, which I'll show you in a second, and nothing happens in here, and then we're all done with that scenario. So let me show you what that looks like. Coming back into program.cs, here's our second scenario. This is where we've already saved that entity, now we just wanna fetch it from persistence and do stuff with it, right? So we're gonna have a new scope, the new DB context, we're gonna go fetch the saved order, this is the one we already created previously, uh, and then we're gonna do some changes to it and call save changes, right? But notice that when we call save changes here, no additional uh, events are fired, and we can see that right here, right? This handler line is only called one time, it's not called down here. All right, now why am I making a big deal of that? Well the way that most people create their aggregates is with constructors, right? It's super common. And so let's look at this demo two, uh, which we're gonna get rid of this return statement here. It says, well, what if we just use the constructor? So in here, everything is basically the same, except that I'm using uh, order two instead of order. So let's take a look at order two. Order two does not use a static factory method, right? It just uses a constructor. It does the work inside the constructor to populate those fields. And then we add the domain event because we just created this thing. Obviously, we should fire off an order created domain event. Now, the problem with that, which I know some of you have run into, is that when we get to the scenario two, we say we're just gonna use the constructor. We create it, we instantiate it, we add it to the DB context, the handler gets called, and then we create a new scope and we fetch it. Uh, and when we then call save changes again, 
there's another domain event there that's being fired again. Now, why is that? Well, because Entity Framework is going to call this constructor when it fetches it from persistence, it's going to add that domain event again as if it were being created again, which of course it's not. We're just fetching it from persistence. So there are ways to avoid this. You can have some if logic and some other trickery to try and, and pull it out of there. You could also move the firing of the event out of your domain and put it inside of the repository or inside of your domain event interceptor. I've seen some uh, teams where they'll do some work inside save changes to say, hey, did I just do an insert statement? Do I have a, an event for that? Let me dispatch a created event there, right? You could do that, but then it's, it's kind of putting domain logic around whether or not to fire an event inside of infrastructure code, right? Because this is very heavily tied to entity framework. It's definitely infrastructure code, not domain logic. And so I'd be hesitant to put domain logic there, but it could be a useful trade-off if you have, you know, created events firing for a hundred different entities, and you could do that with five lines of code in here and not have to have all that stuff in every single entity, right? So I could see the trade-off maybe if you have created events for every entity and a large number of entities. But other than that, I'm much happier to see all of my logic inside of my aggregate. And I can see right here in this static factory for creation, all the things I care about when I'm really creating it for the first time. And I can keep that distinct from what's happening when Entity Framework is just creating it because it instantiated it from the persistence layer, from the database. All right, please let me know if that makes sense to you in the comments. Let me know if you have a better pattern that you're using for this kind of thing and keep improving. Thanks.